All right, and we are back with Sardonic Witchery's Moonlight Sacrifice Ritual. What a fucking black metal album title. <laughs> yeah, don't get it twisted. That ritual is in the moonlight, and it's only the, you know, it's the only <laughs> kind of ritual. It's a sacrifice ritual. And the album art portrays a moonlight sacrifice ritual occurring in a graveyard. So, with a, a hot chick with, uh, with big tits uh, getting but sacrificed. Un- unlike <laughs> on other covers where the chick is naked or whatever, there's, uh... There's just some dude stabbing her with a knife. (laughs) There's no, like, preparation with the knife. There's no scene of unholy copulation. There's no sort of... There's no impression that the chick is in on it. This is just a... Just going for it. (laughs) Totally satanic. Cthulhu. Some Cthulhu tentacles. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's, it's great. So... And so, it's all and it's all black against white, so that it's just like here's the here's the it's thing. It's all detail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So Sardonic Witchery oh, has been around since 2012. I've like heard of them a little bit. Uh, one man project by he goes uh, for this project King Demo Gorgon, and uh, his real name is uh, Ricardo Moda. Uh, and he's got some experience in like the uh, Portuguese black metal scene. Um, he uh, he was the live bassist for Cryfemal for a while. Oh, for a okay, yeah. very cool band. And he was also in a band called mm-hmm. Infernal Kingdom that had a little bit of attention, but he uh, he's he doesn't seem to be associated with like the big name acts or anything. So I selected this record because, like I said, we're like we've got a lot of stuff stacked up for like November, December, but right now it's kind of catch as catch can with records. Mm-hmm. I saw this one pop up on like Sardonic Witchery. That sounds like black metal. And I wanted to get away from doing, you know, like kind of very melodic Slavic stuff and shit mm-hmm. for a little bit. And I found this and I was like, oh, this is cool. That's like the, really the operative word for this record. This is a cool black metal record. But cool in our sense, not cool in raw vampiric new england black metal sense <laughs> yeah not sort of not sort of like colorful not suspiciously colorful tapes with another picture of a guy in corpse paint this is super this is really well this is interesting because we've talked about this idea of full spectrum black metal and that's kind of what's happening on this album but he's doing it in a very different way when we talk mm-hmm. about full spectrum black metal we're usually talking about oh, what if we try to return to the roots while also incorporating all these sort of splinter movements of black metal, and let's make music based on that. Well, And that has the kind of multi-faceted mood that the old stuff had. So the Mort Grinning is a pretty good example of that, even though it all happens at light speed. Yeah, right? yeah. Sardonic Witchery, you know, yeah. th- th- this guy Ricardo, on the other hand, loves a lot of different black metal, and he loves it for mm-hmm. what it is, so he's got several kinds of black metal songs that he loves, and he represents them on this album as a sort of sampler platter of the different styles that he's really interested in. You know, he doesn't really make an effort to incorporate these styles together, but where other people would be like, I'm going to have five different projects for five different styles mm-hmm, of black metal, mm-hmm. Ricardo's like, well, it's all black metal. Why wouldn't I put all these songs on the same record? Which is, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like... Is, is a thought that's like, is that even something worth mentioning? Yes, it is, because people don't really do that anymore, you know? Yeah, I think that's a good thing to do. It helps get you out of the micro-niche thing. It's a little bit like the kind of variation that makes, that, you know, that metal intentionally got rid of, and now you can go back to it a bit without accidentally becoming Led Zeppelin or something. Mm-hmm. Not, not that that would, if you accidentally became Led Zeppelin, I'd ask you what you were drinking. Um... You know, I'd, 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 I'd want what you were having. Um, but, so, um, well, I'll just start off with a sample um, off the opening track. Mm-hmm. And uh, sampling off this record's a little bit weird because n- all these songs are kind of exploring different niches within black metal. And this is his Finnish kind of Sargeist and Satanic War Master song. So, for some context, we're going to start a couple minutes in. He plays the opening riff of this song for three minutes. <laughs> and I think it's fine because it's a great, simple finish riff. And then he takes it into 
ridiculous directions, and I think everyone that listens will understand why I enjoy this record so much. All right. <laughs> so let's give, uh, this is off uh, O Securlo uh, Das Brujas Perversas. So let's Circle give it a shot. Perverse Witches? Yep, something like that. Yeah. yeah all, right. all right, let's go. when I heard this was just, you know this dude is a hard-working guy who loves big tits. Dude, just like the biggest tits imaginable, dude. For sure, yeah. Oh, man. This is like, is, is this not, is that whole passage not handcrafted for me? You know? that, that does, yes, that does. I mean, God, the solo at the end was so just gloriously over the top. I loved that. Dude, yeah, and there's, that that's a that's a big thing on this record, is there are these sick glam rock solos yeah, it wasn't even a black metal solo. I mean, yeah, it's, it's um, so it's uh, but yeah, so it's like that's one kind of song he does, and it's a sort of perfect articulation of uh, you know primarily Sargeist and a little bit of Satanic War Master. Is that the one that started with the Motorcore riff and did that? Was that the one that ran for three minutes, or is this a different song? Is that? Uh, uh, I that think that's it? that's a different song. Yeah, this one mm-hmm. that the first riff you hear in the sample that's the one he was playing for two and a half minutes before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So one thing I'd say about the riffing style <laughs> is just well, yeah. I mean, let's we could go on to mind. Do you have anything more you want to say about this? <laughs> just that it's fucking cool, man. Like, there's... Honestly, this is... I mean, what he's doing there, it's like, take Sargeist and, like, glam it up and make it, like, cool biker music? Like, that's... That this could definitely be... definitely has a... Somehow this definitely has a biker quality throughout. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what I was trying to get at. Um, yeah, d- dude, this could, like... That's the kind of thing that could take over sort of pop black metal. In a way, maybe you know? it would it would make it it would add a little bit of much needed grit to it. Also, sort of yeah, tough guy melodic black metal. Um, oh yeah, no, yeah, it's, 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 um, I, this is just a I, fun record all the way yeah, through. Yeah, you know, it's also it's got this this burly guitar tone, right? Like unusually low end, unusually fuzzy and warm. What do you make of that? I really like it actually. Um, I think it works really well for this stuff. It's, um, 
I like that it's... I like that it's clean. I think this is music that benefits from a clean production. And I like that added low end. I like that it's not... You know, it's like, clearly this is a guy who loves black metal. Mm-hmm. Which is like, a part of making black metal that has almost been forgotten. Like I, I said, I imagine this guy is a huge record collector. Mm-hmm. And he will buy every goddamn black metal record possible. Oh, if and, he likes the label, he'll buy everything. Yeah, yeah, he will buy everything. He'll buy it in every color because he, he wants flags. to support the scene. Yeah, he has too many flags in his room, so the garage where he keeps his two motorcycles is um, <laughs> full of motorcycles. Or sorry, <laughs> well, sorry, <laughs> it is full of motorcycles, but it's also full of flags. More, more uh, black yeah. metal flags. Yes, you know, exactly. It's just, um, I imagine his his uh, moving from Portugal to Texas involved the logistics of transporting like five thousand vinyl records you know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but yeah so Man, what, do, what do you make of this record you know i've, I've yeah, been talking I, a lot yeah i like it i mean i think that at times there are certain things like there are certain kind of maybe jarring transitions between riffs or certain kind of things that repeat longer than you'd expect but i think that's just a feature of this band and it's part of the idea of like let's get every kind of riff onto this record it's definitely, um, it's blocky music. Yeah, it's just, here are some, it's, but it's a little more than just here are my riffs music. Yeah. Because there's some deliberate things. So I, I really like repetition in black metal, you know. I mean, so there's something he does where he'll take a stock riff. And I, at this point, I can't even remember what track it was on. But there's something where he just has this rolling, pretty well written, rolling motorhead hardcore kind of part. And... It just repeats it way longer than you'd expect. And there's a kind of, <laughs> what I describe it as, a persistence as a strategy. Mm-hmm. We go from sick, this is a sick riff, to, my God, the riff is still going. I mean, I, you kind of, you'd want to throw in something else at this point. And then it keeps going, and you're like, oh, now I understand. We're committing to this. Oh, it's full commitment, yeah. So it breaks on through to the other side in a great way. And so this track, Infernal Kingdom, um very mid-tempo oriented there might be two there are two riffs in this and maybe i think a somewhat more melodic bridge riff somewhere Mm -hmm. uh this is his like you know you could the the template for this is burzum and dark throne but the energy here is completely different yeah Um, and the energy is all his own so uh let's and i think that sort of bludgeoning low-end guitar sound is is great on this song so this is towards the back end of Infernal Kingdom. All right, let's do it. on this one are so fucking good they're awesome oh dude black (laughs) black altar i raise the war demonic soul rock and roll chaotic mind fucking unkind pentagram Pentagram, baphomet Baphomet. 
Lucifer, Zeus. Master Satan. Yeah. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah, bro! Yeah. <laughs> the chorus with the more arpeggiated riffing is like, Come ahead to my throne. Kneel before me. Surrender to my power. Give me your soul. <laughs> ah, dude. That's something yeah. worth mentioning. The, the vocals on this are mm-hmm. great. These, like, slob shouts... Uh, you know, against the rest of this music is really interesting, I think. I think it's not... Yeah, I love the vocals. What it reminds me of is less... I can hear it. Yeah, certainly the Slavs do do that. But this guy's shout. They're doing a kind of, like, gruff talking. Mm-hmm. This guy is shout... Burly low-end shouts. Um, It reminds me of the brief parts in Spite Extreme Wing, where the mm-hmm. guy is shouting. In part, just because it's a guy with a deep voice speaking a Latin language yelling. Yeah. But, um... But, like, reminds me of that or the band, um, it's another Italian band that does this a lot very well, Solitudo. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, the burly shouts are great. It's also just very punk, right? It sounds like this guy probably, like, very few people actually listen to Venom. Yeah, this guy definitely listens to fucking he Venom. He listens to Venom. And he understands black metal, he understands black metal as a kind of rock and roll. Yeah. But he's not making black and roll, and there's a, an no. important distinction there, you know. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. This isn't. He understands it as a kind of rock and roll in like a cool and idiosyncratic way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, the way this guy understands black metal, I think, is from a very different perspective from a lot of black metal musicians. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, I feel like this guy is, <clears throat> I feel like this guy's deeply into not only black metal, but obviously like trad heavy metal, as well as early rock mm-hmm. music. And yeah. I think that he was probably a, a, a like a dedicated record collector and just sort of like music guy, you know, the cool music nerds who are kind of interested in everything but really gravitate towards certain things. That's the vibe I get off this guy. So he's coming from this very different understanding. And he's like, I'm literally going to take these things I learned from all these records I own and try to make my own record out of these constituent pieces. Yeah. Um, which is, which would be usually it comes off bad and kind of primitive, but this guy is just really good at assembling those things. Oh, yeah. Also, speaking of the parts he's assembling, I, uh, we, we got to the more abstract stuff so quickly. I, <laughs> about that sample, what I love, that's an example of the persistence. Mm-hmm. Starts out with that kind of trudging, that sort of burzum stomp. That main riff is da-da-da-da-da-da-da. That is literally quoting something from the first burzum record, I think. And... Also, subsequent Burzum records. Um, <laughs> but it, um, well, and it's also quoting kind of like Celtic Frost, you know. True, yeah, going back that further. Yeah, it's got, well, it's a two part riff, and the first part sounds more Burzum, and the second part sounds more Celtic Frost. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Because then he goes da 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 with the tritone. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just, you know, that sort of muddy, whomping guitar, the persistent yelling, he actually. The vocals have this incredibly intuitive quality to them, right? These are the first things he thought of. But, yeah. like, he actually bothered writing them, and he wrote them in relation to the music, where a lot of people don't, right? Mm-hmm. So there yeah. are rhythmic ideas in the vocals, uh, and his performance is so charismatic, and he just thumps that riff over and over again, and there are cool breakdowns, and there's that cool kind of melodic embellishment, and it just it's just crushing. Yeah, it's just... it's. The, the sheer enthusiasm this guy has for the style of black metal yeah. is one of the things that makes it really special, I think. This is a one-man band, but I wouldn't you love to see this band live? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Get drunk as shit. Ride my, oh my motorcycle God, into, the bu- into the bar, you know? It's choking oh, everyone with the exhaust. Old... <laughs> there's a great old video of someone doing that. Unfortunately, it's at some sort of... It, hardcore show or whatever, but there is a video of someone riding his motorcycle into the pit. I think that all the members of him and his live band should ride their motorcycles into the bar mm. and leave mm. them idling as they play. Kills, oh, Judas Priest style. <laughs> yeah. kill, kills like 14 people from carbon monoxide poisoning. Doesn't matter. It's a sick show. <laughs> but... Sacrifice to <laughs> Satan, man. Exactly. 
All right, so my second sample, um, this is off Misanthropia. And again, um, this is going to be another, this is going to be the other sort of sargeisty song, just because I like what I like. I love all the other tracks on this, you know, that, are, that probably tend more towards Dark Throne, Celtic Frost, Mayhem, and some other ideas. Um, but this is a really good one. So let's just listen to the uh, opening of Misanthropia and try that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really extreme in a way, you know, because it's this great kind of fusion of Sargeist and sort of older Swedish melodic ideas, I think. I can hear the Swedish thing somewhat. The thing it reminded me a lot of is Horna, but like Horna if they kept blasting, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I always associate Horna, Horna always drop with to like, a mid-tempo part of a breakdown. That's what I always think about when I think of Horna is, you know, the mid-tempo stompy stuff. Yeah, they well, like some parts of Sargeist, they have this kind of more melancholy blast sound. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the tracks in Sano Yissi are LA or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, I hear the Swedish thing, I, I hear the Swedish connection overall on this record, in part through the guitar tone. Uh, yeah. Well, I think something that interests me about this record is this is a guy who listens to a ton of black metal, and he really hones in on the idea of black metal and probably heavy metal in general, as being about guitars and about a sequence of riffs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's got this unusually sophisticated knowledge of how to construct modern black metal riffs that still reach back to the old school. But in terms of the song structures, they're still very A-B-A-B, very sort of blocky things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's got this, like, very intuitive understanding of how you write a black metal riff now but the songwriting is still very rock and roll which is kind of an interesting idea Mm -hmm. you know just like let's let's take one idea way into the present and then leave everything else back in the 80s you know i i feel that Yeah, yeah yeah um for sure you know, there's been this separation out between second wave stuff and pre-second wave stuff, and in some ways that's natural, because it's almost like there's just a quantum leap and they're totally different things in some way. Yeah. But, like, in the, for this guy, they're not. 
Yeah, yeah. He he sees the thread of mm-hmm. Celtic Frost and Venom and Merciful th- Fate through the 2010s, you know? Mm-hmm. And he really channels that for his music, which is something a lot of people, I think, try to do, but they're usually younger guys and they weren't around for it, whereas Ricardo is yeah, 40, so he was there for it, you know? Yeah, and they usually come off as these kind of clunky hybrids between generic modern riffing and generic Celtic Frost riffing. Right? And they're and they're usually not actual metal guys doing it, you know? Oh, they're usually, yes, yes, they're usually they punks, usually, you know? They're usually the kind of crusty who has a trucker hat, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe they don't have trucker hats anymore, but they did for a while. And, uh, <laughs> and you're going to hang on to that resentment. <laughs> yes, exactly. I won't let that die. Um, so, uh, all right, let's try uh, Ancient Spirits. This is the last track. And, you know, this is the kind of guy where he writes a track called Ancient Spirits. You get the sense it's just about black metal. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just too black. It's too the. Uh, it's too the, the heroic departed. Dude, the the lyrics look like they are about black metal. Into the frozen shadows, feeding the bloody ground, stripped of all my senses, the northern warrior spirits were alive. You know. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a tribute. You know. It's it's kind of it's meta, but not in the way of being like ha ha clever self reflexive. It's like okay, so this genre has been going on for you know. Uh, got 30 years now and Mm -hmm. uh it's a tradition and it has its own mythos and lore right definitely all right uh you know the fucking dude from nargaroth attempted to do that probably uh (laughs) prematurely (laughs) it didn't help him that he's a fucking goober (laughs) but um but this guy does it right so yeah Uh hail hail the uh northern warrior spirits all right let's do it appreciate the sampler platter approach especially after listening to these again because mm-hmm. this is this is a dark throne song we were talking yeah. while i was playing this is you know different riffs are between under a funeral moon or a blaze in the northern sky or maybe panzer faust mm-hmm. and then it bridges into a very transylvanian hunger style riff yeah go up a fifth and play yeah. a melody a little he, bit he's writing he's writing songs about bands in mm-hmm. a way, mm-hmm. you know, like all the bands that he loves, which is sort of like a, a sort of beautiful emotional thing. You know, it comes mm-hmm. from this mm-hmm. like very earnest place of passion for the style of music, which is so fucking forgotten these days. Like, and he really, 
Yeah, people like us were so jaded, you know, for this kind of music. But this guy mm. loves it in the same way he did at 18, you know? To be fair, so do I, but I'm the black metal guy. <laughs> um, I mean, I do, but my tastes have shifted. This guy is committed to just loving the shit out of all the same stuff throughout the years, which is very Oh, I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, really yeah. listen. No, that's fair enough. I don't really listen to Dark Throne anymore. I don't really listen to Hellhammer anymore. Although in my mid-twenties, I had a phase of listening to a lot of Hellhammer um, and Celtic Frost. Well, but, nothing um, wrong with that, but... <laughs> Fair, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I went back to it, what I mean. Um, but um, this is, uh, yeah, this is great. So, you know, uh, so many people write riffs like that as placeholders. Mm -hmm. But in the, in, the, in the old days, in the, in the mighty days of yore, that's what you came for. That was the and, riff. And he writes, that was the big riff. That was the... Yeah, and so, you know, in that riff, he's, how do you make that not suck now? Well, first of all, you care. Yeah. Uh, second of all, you have, like, a really good feel for rhythm. So that whole phrase has a distinct rhythmic character that has to do with, like, one, one change between chords that between power chords that comes down to a matter of like 16th note differences between where you put it right exactly it has internal momentum it could sound static instead and or it could sound shapeless instead it has internal momentum and a direction and a shape and it just hammers down at the end and winds up for the next rep he could play that riff uh for the whole song yeah uh, and it would he does work a, you know? yes but he does a really nice variation on it without really changing it uh, the variation is smart, and then that like nice little just hint of melody in the middle. Uh, the other thing it reminds me of is Kvist, as far as deep cuts from the 90s. Yeah, um, yeah. You see, I've got a really... You know, that should be a whole bonus episode. We should do like four episodes of deep 90s Nordic black metal cuts that I haven't heard. Oh, Because like, I, I haven't yeah. listened to Kvist, you know? like. Yeah, you'd like that one. Uh, yeah. or you, or you'd probably like it, yeah. Uh, I think you'd really like Slaughter Sun um, by Dawn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I uh, love Needham Division, so I should love Dawn. So. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, so the, uh, that's, yeah, so Kvist, although they're known as this kind of the only other band to really pull off the night side and pre-night side variation of symphonic black metal, yeah. they, uh, a lot of their songs, in the way that the old Emperor songs had, actually turned on straight, just grinding, brutal, low-end power chords. Uh, yeah, And yeah. the album opens with just, the album opens with some of the most crushing tritones you've ever heard, and this reminds me of that a bit. That's um, tight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we basically agree, this is like, I, I feel a real kind of, like, emotional connection to this album in a way, just because it's, like, it's so yeah. fucking earnest. It's so, you know, it's, like, it's really divorced from all this, like, kind of, like... This guy has no sense of irony. This guy loves Venom, and he loves Mayhem, and he loves Bathory, and he loves Sargeist, all for the same reason. Because mm -hmm. it is skull-crushing satanic black metal. You know? Oh, yeah. I wish we could... Is there, like, a way we can call this guy's local bar and buy him a beer? <laughs> if he <laughs> gets in to. touch, I'll buy this guy a beer, you know? Oh, 100%, On Termin uh, Terminus, yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, patrons, your money's going to buy in Ricardo some fucking beers for making this album. Hell so. yeah. 